hi everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel so in today's video i decided to make a detachable yoke blouse for my sleeveless dress that i've had for a long time this tutorial was inspired by the dress on the side as seen on stitches by ic so if this is something you're interested in keep on watching and if you're yet to subscribe hit on the subscribe button and let's get started So guys, to make this blouse, I'm going to be making use of this African print fabric here. What I have here is about 3 yards, but you can literally use 2 yards for this tutorial. So now I have already drafted out a basic bodice. It's a half scale. It just goes from the shoulder down to the waist. You really don't need to draft out a whole body that is going to get to the hip for this particular tutorial because really you don't need it. This top is not even going to get to the waist area, okay? So now this is a basic bodice. The neckline is 3 inches width and 3 and a half inches deep, okay? That's the measurement I used for the neckline. Now, this is my armhole, right? I am going to go down from the armhole by about 1 and a half inch for the length of this blouse now i will just come down from the armhole by one and a half inch here this is going to be how long this blouse is going to be okay now once you have done this remember that this is the front pattern we are drafting on this line here is the chest line and because this is going to be an open yoke in front i am going to go up from this chest line by another one and a half inch because i don't want it to be too open but if you want it to be more you can go um up by more inches okay so now i'm going to connect these two points i just got with a curve i'm using my curve rule um you can use your free hand if you do not have anything available to you but this curve just makes it really easier I just connected the two points and this is what i have okay this is going to be what the front will look like now the back is not going to have this curve the back has to be straight for it to be able to cover fully so from the point on the side i just drew a straight line to the center now we're just going to cut this line first this is the back this is the back when i'm done using this pattern to cut out the back before i will now remove the curve and cut out the front so this is my fabric folded into two for us to be able to cut out the back pattern okay i've drawn a zipper allowance line across and it's one and a half inch away from the side of this fabric okay so i'm placing the center of my front pattern paper on this line that i just created okay this is because the back is going to have a zipper else you will not be able to put on this outfit okay so i'm just going ahead to pin it in place now the neckline for the front and the back is also going to be different so i'll go ahead and just draw out a higher neckline for the back so on this shoulder point here i just make a point to know exactly where to start from so from that point i came down by one and a half inch that's how deep i want the back neckline to be and i'm just curving it into the center back so you see it's a round neckline but it's not as deep as what i have on the front pattern so once i've done this i'm going to go ahead and just start cutting it out i will not cut exactly on the line because i have not added stitching allowance to any of these whether the pattern paper or anything so i'm cutting about half inch away from the shoulder area and also i did the same thing for the neck but for my armhole i do not like to add stitching allowance so you can see what i did here for the side i added about one inch and then for the end i'm going to add about half inch of stitching allowance i'll just go ahead and separate this into two to give me the two back pieces so now once you're done cutting out the back we can now remove this curve so i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out and now i will use this new pattern which is going to be for the front to cut out on my actual fabric for the front you see how when it's open how it's going to be so i'm going to use this to cut out the front pattern so guys i'm done cutting out the front pattern and you can see i added stitching allowances to all the parts where it's necessary i've also gone ahead to cut out lining pieces for both the front and the back pieces okay so now this is what it looks like when i place them together you see the stitching allowance on this side is exactly the same okay so that when i sew this in it fits in perfectly make sure that the stitching allowances that you are giving on this side is exactly 
the same so now i'm going to go ahead and remove my pins from the front pattern and we are going to go ahead and stitch the actual fabric and the lining together so you just place them right sides facing each other you're going to stitch the neckline you're going to stitch the side and across the curve the neckline the side and across the curve that's for the front pattern now for the back patterns we are also going to place them right sides facing each other so now you're going to go ahead and stitch the neckline the center back the end and then the side again the neckline the center back the end and the side so guys i am done stitching it down and this is what the front piece is looking like and of course these are the two back pieces okay so now we're going to join them on the shoulders and basically um i'm going to be doing this the same way i normally do them i am just going to use one of the lining pieces to cover up all the other shoulder areas like this this is the easiest way to go about this and the result is the neatest i don't think there's another way you can go about joining your arm uh, your shoulders that look neater than this particular method so just use one of the lining to cover every part and then just go ahead and pin it down and then stitch stitch it down when you're done so i'll just stitch it down here and do the same thing for this other side as well so guys i am done stitching down the shoulder area and for the zipper allowance at the back i've just used pin to hold it down for now you can see how neat the shoulder looks okay um so once you're done it's going to look like this now for the back i'm going to be fixing a zipper this zipper i have here i had to even pull it off from an a skirt i already made before because i didn't have any zipper at home as at the time i was filming this tutorial so you i prefer that you have a zipper that actually opens up instead of a skirt zipper now for the sleeve i already drew out a basic sleeve um, if you do not know how to draft out a basic sleeve i already have a video on the channel on how to go about that now this is a basic long sleeve and i'm just going to mark about one and a half inch points to just separate it it's nothing special just separate it at the end and then use um, from the point just draw straight lines all the way to the top so that you'll be able to cut this out later and spread out the sleeve to give us our flare sleeve so now once you're done you can just label your patterns one two and three and i'm going to go ahead and cut on these lines but i'll leave about half inch away or quarter of an inch away from the top i won't be cutting all the way to the top like i won't be separating these papers so just go ahead and cut just like you see me doing right now so guys this is it you can see now i can spread out this pattern i'm going to use it now to cut out on my sleeve so this is my sleeve i spread the pattern on my sleeve my sleeve is folded into two okay this is the center labeled with one then i have two and then three the distance between each paper that i have here i spread it out with four and a half inch so the distance from one to two is four and a half inch and the distance from two to three is four and a half inch now you can use more inches it depends on how wide you want your flare to be and i gave about one inch um distance away from the pattern paper just so i'll be able to fold it up and on the side i gave half inch on the top i gave half inch so that i'll be able to join the sleeve to the actual bodies okay just give stitching allowances all the way around your pattern paper okay so now this is what one of the sleeve is looking like you can see how it looks like I said, if you want it to be fuller, you can make it small wider. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fold this end here. It's about half an inch wide. So, just go ahead and fold it all the way to the end. And you will do the same thing for the other sleeve. So, guys, after I was done, this is what it looks like. So, if you're someone who might want to have like an elastic at the end of your sleeve, you can totally do that. It doesn't necessarily have to be an open flare. I was actually considering placing an elastic on this sleeve, honestly. But, anyways, now it's time to join the sleeve with the armhole area of the bodies. Okay, so you're going to paint the center of the sleeve with the joining you have on the armhole and then you're just going to continue to pin the sleeve on the armhole so just go ahead and do this and once you're done you're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch it down with about half inch 
stitching allowance so my loves i'm done stitching it down it's going to look weird at this end actually but don't worry that's what it's supposed to look like and i've also gone ahead to fix the zipper like i said i was going to do earlier but like i said make sure to use an open zipper and not a skirt zipper now we're going to turn the sleeve over everything over to the wrong side okay because we're going to be doing the finishing remember you can make this a puff sleeve if you want to all you have to do is add an elastic to the end of the sleeve so now just go ahead and arrange the sleeve and the bodies and from here you're going to go ahead and stitch it down to this to the end of the bodies when you get to the bodies measure your bust measurements because you need it to be fitted so once you've gotten that bust measurement point go ahead and stitch all the way to the end of the sleeve and do the same thing for the other side so after i was done this is what it looks like and we are basically done with this um blouse i don't know what to call it but it's a blouse it's a yoke it's anything you want to call it and this is what the back is looking like and yeah that's basically all for the making of this top um thank you so much for watching i'll be seeing you guys in my next one bye